Okay, hi folks. Um, my name is Colin Darby. I'm the MD of a small but very specialised uh, company based here in Ireland called Micron Optical. Um, I suppose, I, I give you a little bit of background history, um, at, my, at your age when I was in school I didn't really have a clue what I was wanting to do. I was very much more geared towards the sciences end of things uh, because at that stage you're kind of torn between different things which you, I say one day you're interested in one thing and the next day you're interested in something else. So I was very much geared towards doing all of the sciences. Uh, when it came to actually the Leaving Cert and I did that, I decided I wanted to go completely away from sciences altogether and I ended up doing a business studies degree. So. My father actually owned the company, so there was a little bit of nepotism, I suppose, there involved in that. Um, but I got sucked into the company at quite a kind of young age, and I started working there in uh, in the sales areas. And I say we're a small company, been around for many, many years, um, but we deal with microscopes and everything microscopy orientated. And a lot of people have an idea of what, let's say, microscopes are. Um, but I'm going to try and give you a little bit of interesting ideas and various different types of microscopes which we do. So. What do microscopes look like? Most people have an idea, this is the traditional microscope, looking at glass slides for hospitals, laboratories, that type of thing. And we have stereo microscopes looking at it for the kind of the macro things. So these are the typical kind of microscopes. But maybe you don't know that microscopes are also used in operating theatres. So looking at very small, very delicate work uh, when people are performing operations. Also, we have more specialised research ones for very small, very specialist kind of nano type of world uh, research. Also, we have ones with incubators looking at living cells and seeing how things change dynamically. And also, there is digital microscopy. And this is a big way of moving forward because images and information is the way that people want to transmit things. And we all know when something happens on YouTube or on the internet with Facebook, it gets very fast very viral and very quickly all around the world. So microscopy and information images wants to be transmitted a lot quicker these days. So what are they used for? So quite often traditionally used for looking at samples such as specimens in sewage treatment. As one example, looking at fluorescent samples, looking at we dye and inject different colours into different samples and we look and see how they react with microscopes and research applications. Also, we look to see the levels and structures of things. We can create three-dimensional depths of cell structures and see exactly where different samples are on le uh, layers of cell structures. Also, we deal with a lot of the human IVF laboratories around the country, so assisting and helping people have children. That's one little aspect. Also, some of the customers we have are on the industrial side of things too. So the likes of Intel and analog devices, all these companies making chips and wafers, they quite often use our microscopes because they're looking at small little surface defects as well. So even though traditionally most people think about microscopes in laboratories, there's a big industrial application as well. And a lot of the time, especially if you're dealing in the, kind of the areas of sales, uh, every day is slightly different. As I mentioned before when I was doing the seed dating to some of the people, is that even though technically it's microscopes every day, um, every time you get a new people, some people coming towards us looking for information, it can be quite different because we're solving a problem that they don't know what to do. And that goes with a lot of small companies around Ireland specialising in little niche areas like this. Medical stents is another little thing as well for people putting these little stents inside the bodies which helps keep your arteries open. And again, the little surface defects and you can see quite little intricate patterns which are involved in these little things. So people again want to see, check the quality control of these things and they use our microscopes to do so. Traditional obviously microscopy on cell structures in hospitals, looking at snowflakes maybe under scanning electron microscopes. Drug discovery again and seeing how things adhere to certain cellular structures. And of course looking at nasty creepy crawlies. So this particular guy, and you're probably familiar with, is a, a, a nice mite. And there's one other application. Occasionally in our work we come across something really unusual, really quite dramatic. And it was this particular application, it was a scanning electron microscope which looks at very extreme high powers. So anywhere between 5 and up to 60, 70, 80,000 times magnified. And you can really see little details because we live in the macro world and we see things as they are. But when you look at something very, very small, you can't see the detail until you boost it up. And there's this particular image, uh, we nicknamed him Bob, uh, it was a blue bottle larvae. And we could suddenly see so much more details and structures once you highly magnify it. So this is Bob. 
So you can see the level of details that you wouldn't normally see if you see a traditional little larvae, which is very, very small, but you can see a lot more detail and you can see the way they interact as well with different things. So a typical day within our company, and I say again, this applies to a lot of small specialized companies, it all really depends on the area that you're in. And don't forget, working for a company could work in the area of sales. So you're dealing with people on a day-to-day -day basis, trying to obviously sell them a particular product or problem solving for them as well. You could deal in, let's say, in the marketing section as well, whereby you're trying to draw up new ways to approach different customers or trying to, you know, think up new marketing plans or schemes or changing your website design to try and draw people into the company. You also have, well, you could work in the delivery section, making sure products get delivered on time to customers. Very important for the likes of hospitals and people like that who need to have products at a specific time, either weekly or monthly as well, delivered. After sales service, you could have beyond, as we know, obviously here and abroad, there's a lot of technical support uh, teams as well, whereby, for example, in our, in our company as well, people ring up and they need to be uh, problem solved, a particular problem they are. Well, sometimes we can actually help them over the phone without us having to go to them and having to save the expense in them as well. So again, we can talk them through it. Or a lot of times these days with computers, you can remotely access and help them as well or you could become the service guy and you could become the person to go out to the customers and help fix and service the equipment which is uh, involved in their actual uh, location. You could also become the number cruncher if you like facts and figures. Uh, it's more office based of course but if you're into accountancy there are all these different levels and aspects within a small company. Or you could just want to look cool and work in the IT department. So whatever you do, whatever aspect of your job, make sure you enjoy work and be kind to your boss. That's it.